Hey guys, Splice Sweep here, and I'm back again with another Play and PlayStation Home in 2021 video. So it's been a while since I last did one of these videos, and as of this video, the latest PS Home offline update, which is 3.07, has just been released. So in this video, I'll be showing you all some of the new content added in this update, as well as the bug fixes that have made this game a lot better. So let's begin. So the first thing I want to show you is not a map, but the new navigator menus I've made for this update. So let's take a look. There's three of them, and I'll show you all how to access them all in a minute. So this first menu is the one here, which is based on the North American region menu, which now loads automatically when you boot into PS Home, and I made it to be just like it was when PS Home was still online. But there are a few changes and additions, and one of them being this category here, which is for spaces that were added in updates. So let's say you wanted to see what spaces were added in this update. You could go here and scroll down the list and see what's been added. And same for the previous updates. And another feature that's been added to these menus is if you scroll down on this menu, for example, you're gonna see four categories. So there's mini games, Halloween spaces, winter spaces, and more spaces. So the mini games category, this is for spaces that have at least one working mini game in them. So for example, Audi Vertical Run, Burn Zombie Burn. I'm sure you can go down this list in your own time. Then the Halloween spaces, this is for obviously the seasonal content. So all the spaces that are like Halloween themed. Same with the winter spaces, but more spaces. This is where it's a little different to what it actually was in, in uh, when PlayStation Home was online. So this here, this is all of the public spaces. So rather than just a bunch of spaces, this is every single space that we have in offline. So you might see the same space in other categories as well. That's perfectly normal. But this just serves as the definitive list of all the public spaces that we have. And the dev spaces are included at the bottom of it. And then if we take a look at different categories, for example, the core category, we have hub spaces. This includes all the, the spaces that are for hubs. So for example, Central Plaza, the Dead Island edition of that. And then obviously the, all the different European home squares. And obviously the Japan ones too. And then if we go in core districts, we've got stuff like the Action District, the Adventure District, Pier Park, Sports Walk, Indie Park twice, but obviously different regions. And then if we go theatre, this is all the theatre spaces, which includes the lobby and also the, the theatre room. And then if we go to shopping, these are all the shopping centres. So obviously the original mall, the mall they made after that, the first and second floor. And same for the European one as well. And then on the My Home category, we've got Friends Online, but obviously this doesn't work. We've got My Spaces, which just like more spaces, it's all of the uh, apartments. So all the apartments that you we have in offline will be listed under here. And then you've got My Clubs, same thing. Favorites, I'm sure you know what that is. And then Recently Visited, this will show you the last 10 spaces you've gone to. And... Honestly, I think this is one of the better features of this menu. And then if we go to shop, we've got all the virtual stores. And obviously you can't buy anything since the servers are gone. And then if we scroll all the way down, we get HDK browser and character viewer, which obviously that's just dev tool. So I wouldn't recommend using it unless you know what you're gonna do with it. Now, some of you might be wondering why I made free menus and some of you might not remember this menu from when you played PlayStation Home. Well, the reason I made free menus is because of the three main regions of PlayStation Home, which are North America, which I've shown you the menu for, Europe, and Japan, and I made a menu for each region. So to access different regions, it's a different key. So to access the European menu, you press F2, and it will load like so. And obviously, as you can tell, there are five categories compared to the four for the North American region. So I'll show you what's in them. So as you will have already noticed, the updates category, that's all the same, has all the spaces. And then if you go over to my home, you've got friends online. Again, doesn't work. Personal spaces, favorites. But what separates this menu from the North American menu, other than the, uh, the bright colors along the top, is this highlights category where it has casual action adventure and sports so if we go on casual you've got indie park home tycoon 
and Aurora. These are actually stuff that was in the category. And then for action, we've got Action District, Novus Prime, No Man's Land, and then Adventure, Adventure District, and Western Frontier. And then Sports, we've got the Sports Walk, the Sodium 2, and Dragon's Green. And then for the Browse category, which I forgot to go over in the American menu, but it's the same thing, so we'll go over it now. We've got Recently Visited, Your Last 10 Spaces, Hub Spaces, so all of that stuff. And then we've got SCEA, so SCE stands for Sony Computer Entertainment, the A stands for America, and in this case the E stands for Europe, and then the J stands for Japan. So if we go into here, you can see all the spaces that start with SCEA. So obviously they're either spaces that were made there or exclusive to there. And then if we go to SCEE, -E, we've got all the European spaces. And then same with Japan, you know, the Japan home square and stuff like that. And then below it, we've got things like Digital Leisure. These are the uh, developers of PlayStation Home. So all the spaces in offline that we have that's made by them, they'll be put in their own category. Same with EA, Granzella, and on and on and so forth. And then right at the bottom, we have mini games, Halloween spaces, winter spaces, and more spaces again. And then on shopping, it's the exact same thing, you know. Virtual stores, and then at the very bottom, the HDK browser and character viewer. So the third and final menu in this update is obviously the Japan menu, which to activate that, you simply press F3 on your keyboard, and it loads. And obviously got way more categories than both the European version and the North American. So the first one is favorites where it's just an entire category, pure and simple, new and recommended. So it's just like the European one has a, a hub space for you to go to and then updates below it. And then more spaces, an entire category. So it's even easier to find shopping, you know, just like it is on the American and European menu. And then private spaces, obviously we've got Harbour Studio up here, and then we've got personal spaces, all the personal spaces, same with clubhouses, and then explore. It's very similar to the European version, but a little different. So this we've got recently visited, and I'm not just talking about the icons that are different. We've got this, which is obviously just another hub spaces, but this is what they called it in Japan. And obviously we've got these three, the companies, and then at the very bottom, we've got mini games, Halloween spaces, and winter spaces. And obviously, because we've already got more spaces, it's own category, we don't need it here. And at the end, friends online, but obviously that feature doesn't work in this build. So now that I've shown you the new navigators, let's start by showing you some of the new maps and also some of the new mini games added. So let's go and have a look. Let's go through the more interesting ones first. And we'll start with Diesel Museum. So what I really like about this space is that it looks like it's broken, like it's missing something. When the only thing it's actually missing is a camera mini game where it would uh, make your camera view go up so you can see it. But luckily in this build we have free cam at the touch of a button. So if we go into free cam, we can see these images how they're supposed to be. So something like this, I think. But yeah, I'm sure you get the idea. Uh, I just like how, in this space, I really like how everything seems just large and you feel tiny in this map. Gives a nice little feeling. I don't really see many spaces like this. But anyways, let's move on to the next space. Now the next space I want to show you is this space here, which is a special edition of Home Square 3 and was the first space I found for this update. And before that, I didn't even know this space even existed. And I thought this was the Home Square 3 Little Big Planet Karting Takeover version. But after looking around the space a little more, I realized that it's actually the Little Big Planet PlayStation Vita edition of Home Square 3. And the way I could tell is by this massive sticker here. And I remembered that this is the Little Big Planet PS Vita logo. But it's still a nice space overall. Not as good as the Karting edition, because obviously in the Karting edition, they uh, knocked all this down and put a massive racetrack. But I still like even the background details like the Ferris wheel with the missing cart and the massive Jack and the Beanstalk reference over there. I really do like the space and it has obviously become one of my favourites in this update. With that all said, let's move on to the next space. And funny enough, 
in this update, I happened to also find the Little Big Planet Karting takeover of Home Square 3. And honestly, this is by far my favourite map added. Unfortunately, I don't have the mini game, but maybe in future I will. But what I really like is when I press F8 on my keyboard to activate Fast Run. I can just zoom around the track, even though it's not the mini game and on else is here. Still a nice thing. But with that said, let's move on to another space. Now, this space here, I know is going to bring back a lot of memories for people since this was probably one of the last spaces they ever visited in PlayStation Home, considering it was one of the last added. But obviously, this is Home Square version 4, which was also available in North America, funny enough and it replaced version 3, Home Square. What I really like about this is just the beach down here. It's sort of like the, this reminds me of a French city in a way. And obviously you can go up here and get a view. Unfortunately that mini game where you could dive down doesn't work. But still it's a very nice space and I've been looking through this since, well, about a year now. So it's nice to finally have it. Anyways, let's move on to another space that's been added in this update. So another space that's been found is this one here, which is the Complex 2. And what's great about this is that it's the whole thing, so it's not like a portion of it. You don't, obviously you can't buy the other part, so all of it's here. As you can see, you've got the upstairs bit, the kitchen, down here, even down here where the bedroom is. Balcony, all of that. You've even got the, uh, the outside bit, if you go around here and also up here. If you go down here, got the pool. All the areas are included, which is great, I think. And then around here, you've got the garden. Obviously, you can't go behind here, it's not solid. Yeah, I really do like this space, and out of all the apartments that have been added in this update, this is by far my favourite one. So that's all of the new spaces that I'm going to show you in this video, but there's still more that's been added, but I'll leave those for you to visit on your own. What I'll show you now is some of the new mini games that have been added in this update, so let's go to them. So this first one isn't really like a mini game, like it's not horse that works, but it's something that I know a lot of you will like, and it's over here, and if you can't tell, yep, the music works. And obviously after the music is done, uh, the music will change to something else and this is something I think a lot of people are going to enjoy like I said and it was certainly a pleasure to get working again and also just in case you're curious yes the music does work up here so let's go up here and you can tell, it works up here as well so yeah works just like it used to back in the day same music, original quality, everything you could ask for and more. So let's move on to another space where the mini games are working. And here we are at the Enchanted 3 mini game. So let's play the game. As you can see, looks perfectly fine. Only thing is, I actually don't know how to play this, so I'll probably be terrible. Let's give it a try. Okay. Oh wow, how many shots does it take? Oh, I got a headshot. Wow, first time using this gun and I've already got a headshot. Oh. oh this is weird, these inverted controls. How much health do I have? Did I just get him in... I wasn't even aiming for him. I was hoping though that he would just run in front. I gotta say, it feels really weird that a robot is using a gun like this. It's like a proper gun and not like some sci-fi gun. Oh. 
much health do I have? Yeah, you're not gonna shoot me through. Why did you shoot in mid animation? Put a shotgun on that dude. Yeah, that works. Well, I'm guessing you have to keep going until you find all the, uh, the gold things. Alright then. Oh, that's a good name. Yep. Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. Ooh, two for one. Oh, I'm dead. Well then. Well, pretty much my first time. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> oh. You want to play this? You know where to find it. So let's move on to another mini game. Not as exciting, but still a cool feature. And here we are, Central Plaza. And no, this is not the mini game. This unfortunately doesn't work. But over here, when this decides to load, this at home finally works. As you can hear. And it has all the original songs. To be attracted when your wrist glow bright and the charm on the chains like a disco. So, yeah, now plays the songs just like it used to. And I love how I've got that poster there still, even though it works. And also, yep, as you can tell, it's snowing in Central Plaza. And before I end the video, I just want to show you a few new changes that have happened on RPCS3 for all of you who play PS Home on PC. So I'll switch over and show you what's changed on there. So here we are on RPCS3. Now the first thing I'd like to mention is that now it is fine for you to update RPCS3 whenever there's a new update. The issue where if you updated RPCS3 it would make it freeze when you clicked offline on the PS Home menu has finally been fixed. But unfortunately you can no longer double click on PS Home like I have right here. But luckily, there is a very easy solution to this. And for those of you who have a custom name who've seen my tutorial, how to change your name on PlayStation Home, you already know this. So what you do is, you go to file, bootself.elf, or slash elf, then go to wherever you store your PlayStation Home build. For me, it's on the C drive. You go PlayStation Home, dev hdd0, game, NPA triple zero ten USR DIR and then scroll down until you find PlayStation Home dot self and then double click on that and then PlayStation Home will automatically boot up. It's that simple. Now the next thing I wanted to show you is that a lot of the graphical errors, such as the dead sun appearing in the water, has been fixed as you can see. If you saw my playing PlayStation Home in 2021 part 1 video, you might remember seeing a grey sun in the water here, but that's finally been fixed as well. And another thing that's been fixed is the weird fog that was appearing in the background of larger maps such as this. It's hard to describe exactly, but what it was, was, you, it's what you see right now, 
but far away and repeated multiple times and they're next to each other and it was like a weird circle kind of fog. But if you remember that, just wanted to let you know that it's also been fixed now. And the last thing, it's a small thing but it helps a lot that they fix this. But on the old version of RPCS3, when you pressed F9 like so and tried to type on the command line like I'm doing right now, it was super sensitive to keystrokes. Let's say you tried to type a H on the line like I did. Rather than doing it like that, it would end up doing that. So to type what you wanted, you had to be super sensitive with your keystroke. Like you had to basically tap the key you wanted to do and release it just as it activated. Otherwise, you would type the letter about 10 times. Well, if you had any issues with that, I'm glad to say it's finally been fixed. Anyways guys, that brings us to the end of the video and I hope you all enjoyed. If you're new here and would like to find out how to download and play this yourself, there will be links in the video description to videos of mine showing you how to install this yourself on both PC and PS3, as well as many other tutorials now to do things in PlayStation Home on my channel. But with that said, take care and peace.